Tesvairo, Vayidaber Elokim El Moshe. Elokim spoke to Moshe, Vayomer Elov Ani Hashem, and he said to him, I Ani Hashem. Rashi, what's Elokim? Elokim is always Mid Sadim. Dibirimo Mishpot, Al Shehikshel Daber Lomar, Lomer Ros Lom Hazev. Because he spoke strongly to Baruch Hu by saying Loma Loma it was something which was inappropriate for Moshe Rabbeinu to question Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Yom Eilav Ani Hashem, Nemon Neshalim Socha Tov Mahalch Limsalch Lefonei Betomim. I'm faithful to pay reward to those who walk before me without question. Lo Lachinim Shlach Ticho. I didn't send you for no reason. Kiim lekayim dvorai should ibarti loves to be shown him to fulfill my words that I had spoken to the others to be shown him. Beloshna zem otzim shu nijers kamakomas ani Hashem nemen lepora shome itzalone if it's a question of being punished ultimately to be retribution. Kom chilat Hashem Hashem alokech ani Hashem shome itzal kiim mitzvos. We'll be speaking about fulfillment of mitzvos. Kigon v'shmarti mitzvos of asisem at osom ani Hashem. You will keep them. You will retain them and do them. Ani Hashem. What is ani Hashem? Can be regarding. Retribution. So, what is Nem Ani Hashem? Nem and Litan Schar. I am faithful to pay the just reward. Ani Hashem, you're questioning how could this be Gula? Ani Hashem, so you're questioning the Hakurish Baruch What is this? I'm sad. How do we understand Moshe Rabbeinu? How do we understand Moshe? I mean, did, did Moshe Rabbeinu question Hakurish Baruch whether there was going to be a Gula or not? <laughs> <laughs> right? He did, definitely has to show him, didn't question it. Whether it was to be a gula, he was only questioning why does the gula have to come about in this manner. But even that he shouldn't have asked. Because if our didn't explain it to you, Hashem, Hashem, why does this have to, have to be the approach to gula? That it has to start with the things becoming. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> more difficult before they get better. It's like Avraham Avinu asked Moeda Kirusheno. Oh, well, it's so terrible asking. What do I know? He asked, how do I know my children will merit, they'll, 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 they'll be worthy of it. Kodesh Baruch said, look, it's not dependent upon, uh, there's no precondition. So what are you asking? Hmm. So again, the asking, it's like um, a Rebbe uh, or a father says to his son, do something. And then the child asks, could you explain to me why? Why? The father would have explained. If the father chose not to explain, asking why is a disrespect. That's a disrespect. So that Kodesh Baruch didn't offer the reason, so that itself is considered uh, a lack. That's a failing, on Moshe Rabbeinu's part. But it wasn't Chas V'Sholem, that Moshe Rabbeinu's questioning, is, is it going to happen? Mm. He said it's going to happen. And the Hashem... Back and forth. That was considered. There, it was an expression of his humility. Right? As a humble person, right, he has to behave that way. If, in fact, it may be a question of he may be sliding our own. So, humility demands he behaves. Well, what's demanding this? There's nothing over here pushing him to, to, to ask this question. What's asked? What's the question? Right? That's the difference. I mean, it's a good question what you're asking. <laughs> if you take a look in the, in the Medrash, what precipitated Lomarosa? It says that they came out before Moshe. It says the, uh, the, the Shotram came out, and they said, If Ashtem Rechenu Beni Paro, you've caused you've, you've us to be seen very negative in the eyes of Paro, Hashem should judge between you and us. Right? That's what they said. And after that, that's when Moshe went, right? If you go Moshe as Aaron, here it says, the came out. He was shown to be so, so Paro explained to him why. 
So they met Moshe and Aaron. It says from his paro, V'yomar lehim, Yera Hashem Aleichem, V'yishkot. Hashem Befashtem, Eshechen Beinu Paro Beinu Avod, Los Yitzcher Biyod Nuhal Geinu. So they came with a claim against them. So because that claim, there was such a like, direct attack on Moshe and Aaron, that's what Moshe, that's what caused him to ask the question. I mean, what Moshe didn't know, Moshe knew what was going on, that he withdrew the straw subsidies, and they're still demanding the same quotas, but it was, they were like under attack. So, see, what does Rashi say? Vayifku, who are these chevra who met him? Dosan Vaviram. So Dosan Vaviram were the direct cause why Moshe Rabin didn't go into Eretz Yisrael. Ato Tireh, because somehow, Dosan Aviram, their, their, their whole demeanor was always under attack. So if you're not able to respond to them, it's like almost like a Chil Hashem. They're coming with, a, with such a direct claim. Otherwise, you know, look, Kodesh Baruch has his ways. But here they're under attack. So they're the one who precipitated the question. Dosan Aviram over here. Take a look at the Medrash quotes a Pesach that sometimes a question could actually, even the person who's so special, could actually speak, say not the right thing. He shouldn't what? He shouldn't uh, you know, be in a place that he thought his brother should be. Uh, should be slighted. He wanted to slight his brother. So I was thinking that maybe Moshe Rabbeinu wants to know the answer to Israel. He'd be sensitive to their feelings. So what is going to inevitably be a question? So what is he going to answer close to the that was legitimate? All that went back and forth was okay till the end. When he answered all the questions, says, why did you s- that, that already was already, he, he was punished for that. Mm-hmm. One second. Over here, and see the person. But there's, there is, I, I look in Shmos, it's, it's, it's in Bairo. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. It's interesting, uh, Kodesh Baruch Hu doesn't punish a person unless he deserves to be punished. Doesn't learn. Factually, I mean, the Orchayim says in uh, in one location that if Moshe Rabbeinu would have gone to Teretz Yisrael, as much Klausel couldn't have existed. Why? Because anything that Moshe Rabbeinu did 
had an eternal existence. If he would have built the base of Migdash, the base of Migdash couldn't be destroyed. Right? He, he's the one who oversaw the building of the Mishkan. The Mishkan was hidden away, never fell into the hands of the enemy. But the base of Migdash that was built by, the first base of Migdash was built by Shlomo Melech. It actually was destroyed. It was, everything was taken away by the enemy. So the Pesach says that Hashem poured out His wrath on the stones and the brick. Eights of Avonim, the, the wooden and the stone. If HaKadosh Baruch couldn't expend His wrath on the stone and the, and the wood, who would have He had to expend His wrath on? On, the, on us. He would have had to destroy us. So the medium for to expend His wrath was destroying the base of Mitch. But if Moshe would have built the base of Mitch, He couldn't have destroyed it. So who would he have to destroy? He would have had to destroy Kalal Yisrael. So that's the reason why Moshe couldn't go into Eretz Yisrael for that reason. As much as he pleaded and this and that, Shem says, I don't want to hear about it. Because that's to be a Kalal Yisrael. So it's interesting. Why did Moshe have this challenge? Why did Moshe say, Why was he confronted? The answer is, Moshe may not have to fail. So Hashem presents him with something that he's going to fail. It would have never been presented it to him. Of course, it's his choice to fail. It's his reaction. But let's say Hashem would have never presented him. He would have never met Dossel Virum coming out. He wouldn't have said such a thing. If he wouldn't have said such a thing, he would have gone to Eretz Yisrael. But he had to be confronted with this situation because ultimately, HaKadosh Baruch knows the Jews aren't worthy. They, ultimately, they're going to sin. So if they're going to sin, they have to go into exile. But if they, they're going to sin to such a level, the wrath of Hashem has to come upon them. So if Moshe goes in, what's going to be? It has, has to come upon them. So Hashem has to present them with this situation that he should ask the question, he should fail to say, you know, you're not going in because you asked this question. Okay. just wanted to ask you something. I'm having a cup of coffee. Is it okay? Okay. Can I ask for sure? I have to ask permission. <laughs> okay. Look. I don't want to look bad when you ask questions. <laughs> you know, if you learn the morale, like very often he says, you know, he says people explain different such things in the Torah. And he says, he, find, he says, you find that the antagonist of Moshe and Aaron were does not have Aaron. He shows in Chazal many situations. It's two against two. Dos Navirim always versus opposing Moshe Narum. They Well, they happen to be b- bad people. No. They were there continuously. This, this is not as he uses the word. This is not just, it's coincidentally because they were there, they were always, they would just happen to be the troublemakers. No. Like a Kodesh Baruch who puts situations present certain situations. You have an antagonist, because that's your challenge in life. That's the way it is. ACO says, it's not like the fools who explain it the way they explain it. Those are the words he use. Lo kamosh apsoim. Explain it, where they say it, it's, it's mikra. Yeah, Joshua, you can sit over here. David's not here. You can sit here. Okay, we have just another two minutes for Chomish. The Eiro, El Avram Yitzchak El Yaakov, he says, I appeared to Avram Yitzchak and Yaakov, Bekel Shakoi, with the name of Shekel Shakoi. What is the name of Shakoi? Shakai. Shakoi Dai. No, no, no. Kale is power. His power is limited. What is Yudke Vavke? Yudke Vavke, Hoyo Vier is unlimited. That's infinite. So what Avram and Yaakov, they saw the limited power of God. They never saw the unlimited power of God. That he never showed them. He says, to them I only revealed myself to a limited degree. I mean, if you see a, show a person the sun shining at its brightest moment, <coughs> you can't mistake it that that sun is something other than the sun. But let's say you see some light coming over the horizon. Say maybe there are searchlights. And that's what's causing the sun coming over, the light coming over the horizon. Is it the sun? You don't know. Kel Shakai compared to Yudke Vovke is like light coming over the horizon where you could attribute it to something else other than the sun. He says, I only revealed myself to Kel Shakai, comparatively speaking, it's nothing. 
And there were questions, and they never asked those questions, Avram Yitzchak and Yaakov. I promised them they never asked questions. But you, where I've given you this level of understanding, which what they understood doesn't appear to you, and you go ask the question, Shmi Hashem lo to be continued.